Later this month, Ridley Scott's new Napoleon film hits the big screen, and I'm sure many of you are excited to see it just like I am. I'm sure completely deliberately, Warlord Games' Soldier of Fortune miniature for the month of November 2023 is Napoleon himself, the Emperor's new clothes. You get two miniatures this month, Napoleon himself posing in all his Emperor's regalia, being painted by Francois Gerard in his 1805 portrait. Being the lovely people they are, Warlord Games has sent me a copy of this month's miniature to paint and do a quick video on. And I won't lie, it's an absolute cracker. Really, really nice quality sculpt. Really, really, really gorgeous miniatures. I was very excited to do this slightly unusual product. Welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart. In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint this Napoleon miniature. And before I get started, those of you who maybe don't get the Warlord Games newsletter email may have not seen this. There is a painting competition for those of you who have purchased this miniature or got it free by ordering a certain amount. All the details are there on the screen. You can find them on the Warlord Games community page. If we start by taking a quick look at the portrait here, the miniature looks like it could be pretty daunting. There is a lot of detail, lots of lots of lace and gold and all the stuff that's really, really hard to reproduce with a paintbrush. But what we'll try and do is paint something that represents it, even if it doesn't have every single detail shown. I thought it might be fun to mount the miniature as a small display. So I dug out this resin display base I'd had knocking around for a little while and then grabbed out a circular base, which I stuck on a piece of kitchen roll. This is quite heavy duty kitchen roll. I believe the brand in the UK is called Blitz. I picked it for this nice sort of textured pattern it had on there. It's going to be some carpet. So I mocked up the display I wanted. The artist himself comes on a little bit of stone floor. So I needed to build that up as well. So I used some old plastic bases I had and I worked out where Napoleon was going to sit as well. And that was it. I was quite happy with that as a, as a small layout for this little mini diorama. I primed the miniature black and then went on to give it a heavy white coat afterwards. Now, I often call this Xenothor. I had a question in comments um, earlier this week and it got me thinking about how I describe it. Because I don't just go from one angle, technically it's not Xenothor, though a lot of us use the term Xenothor. I go on and highlight afterwards by dry brushing a bit of white to really pick out the detail. Essentially what I'm doing is underpainting in order to take some glazed base coats. I'm going to start with the skin here and I'm going to be using Express Colour from Vallejo. This is dwarf skin as the main base, but I'm also going to be using some deep purple and some gloomy violet. And this is a recipe that I've stolen from Juan Hidalgo on his YouTube channel. And he was testing these paints when they were first about to go into production and had a lot to do with them. And he used this method on a Blood Bowl Ogre, I think it was at the time. And I just thought it was a really, really simple way of getting a lovely skin texture down. It looks fantastic without highlighting. I do go on and highlight it afterwards. Apologies if you watch a lot of my videos recently and have heard this same spiel over and over again. But I just think that it gives you such a nice effect. So you see here, I'm painting in the skin on all the areas that the skin needs to be. So it's on the faces and the hands. So once the dwarf skin is down, I go in with the gloomy violet and I really aim for thin lines around the areas where there'd be the most shadow. So this is the coldest color you're adding here to add the, the multi-tones to the skin. So just where the skin touches, areas of clothing where it will be slightly hidden, around the cuffs of the sleeves, around the tops of anything they're wearing on their head, that kind of thing. After that is the turn of the deep purple, which is the warmer, more redder tone. And I tend to focus here around the mouth, along the sides of the nose, and just underneath the cheekbones. And it gives a little bit of warmth to the lower parts of the faces. You can do it on the foreheads as well. It really depends on the, the miniature and what space you're painting on. I often paint a little bit in the eye sockets as well. For the hands, I like to add it across the fingers and knuckles and then using a clean brush, just make sure I take it off the top edges again, just leaving it in the recesses. You can see here I go on and do exactly the same process on the painter. And then we move on to one of the main colours, which is white. And I'm using Templar White, also from Express Colour, and I'm thinning this 50-50 with their own medium. You can use any 
medium really as long as it's a, a matte type of medium rather than a gloss to so thin it down and I'm applying it over a lot of the miniature an awful lot of this this miniature is white it doesn't really matter if you get it on areas that aren't going to be white because it's so light colored it doesn't really affect the later stages essentially what you're doing is shading the white you've already got on the miniature this is effectively a gray glaze or wash which sits in the recesses giving you a sort of gray shadow to those areas of white it only works really if your miniature is either white or very very heavy zenithord or underpainted as i've done so with these miniatures now while that white is drying I've moved on to contrast skeleton horde and I'm planning to use that in a couple of places. First of all we have the stone floor so I'm applying it fairly heavily and then what I'll do is with a clean brush I will take a lot of it back off the main flat areas. I also use it on the canvas itself. You've got the wooden frame and things to paint afterwards. The canvas is a off-white creamish colour so again same method slap it on fairly thick and then using a clean brush to remove any pooling and to make it a little bit lighter. Next up is some Garagak sewer also from Contrast and this will be the base layer for the wood on the artist's easel. There's some wooden areas on Napoleon's staff as well so I use it there and I also use it off camera on the palette of the artist. For the artist breaches I'm using Cloudburst Blue from Army Painter Speed Paint. I want to use two different kinds of blues on the artist. and I'm going for the, the darker, more desaturated colour on his trousers. For the jacket and beret I'm turning to Express Colour Omega Blue which is a slightly brighter, more vibrant blue. I'm also using it for his waistcoat. It's obviously a two-piece suit and uh, very, very smart. I'm sure he's a wealthy artist. And while we're in with the blues, let's go with some contrast. Our serum in blue. I'm going to be using this for the plinth that Napoleon is standing on. Sticking with contrast, we're going for some flesh terrors red, and this is an extra rich red, slightly darker than the Blood Angels red, which I use an awful lot more. But I felt that this was a better match for what was needed here. I wanted something have a hints of maroon to it and it's such a vibrant rich dark color and it's perfect for those real sort of regal velvety robes that Napoleon's wearing. You have to be a little bit careful to try and keep it off the white here you, you want to be able to go and highlight that white and not have to paint over too much I do make the odd mistake but all in all the red mostly went where the red was supposed to go. Now turning to some contrast of Black Legion, I'm going to be painting the artist's shoes and Napoleon's hair with this. The artist's got a nice little neckerchief and I'm going to be using some lizard green from Express Colour just to pick that out as a little spot colour, something a little bit different. Then after that we go to Contrast Sigor Brown to pick out his moustache and hair. To highlight the red on the robes, I'm turning to the Vallejo Noctura range and we have Sanctuary Red and we have Fire Flame. As alternatives, flat red from Model Colour as well as Dark Vermilion are pretty good. You will need to add a little bit of flesh tone to the Dark Vermilion to lighten it slightly. The Noctura ranges are brilliant sets if you can get hold of them. They're not always in stock and not always easy to grab, but I would recommend them if you want some really, really nice quality ranges. The first layer is just pure sanctuary red on the highest areas of the cloth, really making it stand out that little bit more. The next stage is a 50-50 mix of the two reds using a pretty standard layering technique here, leaving each layer a little bit thinner than the next so the previous colours show through. For the final highlight I'm using the pure fire flame and rather than doing smooth lines I'm dotting my way down here. It's fabric after all so having slightly irregular marks and things really helps add to the texture. Now it's time to work on that white which is the other main colour of this miniature and I'm using white grey and off white from model colour. They really really are it's a couple of the best whites I've ever used. Really really fantastic if you haven't tried them already definitely grab some they're so easy to use they thin nicely and you don't often get that chalky effect you quite often do with white paints. 
So it's a very much less is more here. You have a white base layer with the gray shadow that's been put in using the express color paint. So that's in all the recesses giving you what looks like a pretty nice finished white as it is. So you're really just cleaning and tidying it up here. So I'm using very, very thin paints, slowly building up to the off white as the top color. And it's quite hard to see on camera the white reflects off the lights that I need to paint. So it's a little bit hard for me to show exactly what it looks like without the natural eye look here. But hopefully you'll get the idea that you're just accentuating the brightness, leaving the shadow that's left there below. It's quite a lot of white on this miniature, so you have to take your time and work your way around. There's lots of fur type fabric as well, so you really want to make sure that you take a little bit of time just picking out the most raised areas to really get that effect. The artist does have white socks on, so I'm using the same method here just to highlight those. And that brings us on to the goals, and I'm starting with Wasteland Brown from Express Color. I've decided to use a non-metallic metal method here. A couple of reasons. One, I think it'll look really nice on a miniature of this type, but the main reason being there is some very, very subtle detail on the miniature itself that might get hidden way the light shines off metallic paints. So base coating here with this wasteland brown, it's running into all the recesses and really picking out the detail on what would be this, these gold tassels, this gold filigree that's on the bottom of the, the cloak that he's wearing, which you really can't see on camera. And it's very, very hard to see with the naked eye, especially with the miniature so white as it is. So I think this was the best way of picking out that detail on which I can go on and highlight afterwards. And there's quite a lot of gold on the miniature as well, so I'm working my way around using this colour. You can see his wasteland brown has got sort of warm yellow ochreish tones to it. So as it settles in all the recesses, you get that dark brown effect, but you've already got a bit of a yellowish effect forming on the, the higher areas from that anyway. So it's done half the job for you, then very much it's giving you an outline to follow for your non-metallic style painting, which, is, which isn't always easy. But essentially what we're doing here is just highlighting the way you would do if you were highlighting a yellow or a brown. For the highlight colors, we're gonna be using model color, English uniform, Japanese uniform, green ochre, and then off-white. I start by mixing a little bit of the Wasteland Brown into the English uniform just to give a slightly darker base and really, really tie into that base layer. It's very, very hard to see here because I'm painting directly onto the red of the cloak here, but I'm trying to do something to represent all of the gold lace that's in the side of the red cloak. Now, this isn't on the miniature. Some parts is detailed in. This stuff isn't on the miniature, so you'd have to paint it in. The wonderful studio paint job that Warlord Games have done, they've done a great job of doing this. It's probably a little bit beyond my freehanding skills, but I want to do something to represent it. So what I'm doing is lots of semicircles, half circle lines, of which I'm going to add lighter layers within and slowly build up to give the effect of some kind of sort of gold lace that's on the bottom of his cloak. Is it a cloak? Someone tell me what it is. As that first layer is dry, I just work back over the same parts of the miniature again, picking a lighter tone in that little selection that we went through at the beginning. You can slowly see the effects start to come together. I also do want it to be quite dull and desaturated and not stand out too bright. I want people to look at the miniature and think that's red, not that's red and yellow and whatever. So I really want to make sure that it is subtle enough and doesn't detract too much from the rest of the miniature. So I'm using the same colors in the same order and all the other gold parts as well. So you've got the tassels on the, the bottom of the, the, the white robes on the inside. You've got that area at the bottom of the white robes that's all supposed to be laced to detail, which also needs highlighting a little bit. And you've also got these gold markings on the tops of his shoes as well. And it really was just a matter of taking my time, working my way around the miniature. You've got lots of areas that you need to slowly build up layer by layer. Tassels here and there, gold chains around the shoulders, a bit like you'd see on a Chamber of Commerce or Mayor or someone in the UK. I'm sure these have all got proper names, so someone can put them in the comments and tell me what all of these, these sort of jewels of state would be at the time. But I think as we're finally getting towards the end, you start to see the overall effect. It definitely looks like a nice basic version of a non-metallic gold. 
A few final touches of pure highlight with little dots of white and I think we're there. Next up was a little bit of contrast Imperial Fist. And I'm using this very, very sparingly here just to add a touch of warmth to certain areas of that non-metallic gold that we've done. While I didn't want to go with a strong yellow colour, I wanted to build it up with those sort of ochres and browns and things. He still looked a little bit brown in a certain area. So just by adding a touch of yellow here and there, just really, really kind of warmed it up a little bit and made it look even more gold-like. Now back to things that are a bit more simple. We have some flat earth and some tan earth from model colour. I'm just using these to highlight the staff or any of the wooden areas. I follow the same method up on the easel and on the artist palette. Now we move on to the blues. We're using model colour dark Prussian blue and Prussian blue. And these will be used to highlight the trousers. So I'm using a 50-50 mix of those two colours first working on the highlight areas so the contrast or the speed paint as it was in this case with cloudburst blue base layer does give you some shadow and where it's lighter it shows you where you need to paint in your first highlighted colors so i'm just slowly building up based on that outline that's already there to highlight those blues i'm mixing in some lendanus gray from scale colors fantasy games range so i just mixed a little bit into the blue that i was last highlighting with just to give it a little bit of a lighter colour. Moving on to a pure Ladana's grey for a very subtle, thin highlight at the end. Now for a Ranrod and Jorild in blue from the same Fantasy Games range from Scale Colour. I'm going to be using these to highlight the more brighter blue which we have on his jacket and beret. Working the same way as I did on the trousers and I'm just using the, the base layer here that was put down by the Omega Blue Express colour just as a guide to work from. Working from the highest areas first, applying the highlights to those and then slowly sort of blending it in. At each stage I keep adding a little bit more Joy in Blue to the highlight mix and just building it up layer by layer. Finishing finally with pure Joy in Blue. Now for some two thin coats, ethereal green. I'm just using a touch of that to highlight that little scarf or neckerchief that the artist has. Before painting the paint on the palette, I've left some white areas so they would take some contrast paints. We have blood red, or green, I think from memory, and imperial fist. For the steps in Napoleon standing on, I'm going to use royal blue, what else, to highlight that area. So I'm just filling in the blue a little bit and we used um, the Asuramin blue from contrast as the base layer here. So just building that up and, and leaving it a little bit more of a solid color. Wet blending in the jewelry old in blue before adding a thin edge highlight of the same blue. Now to work on that skin and highlight further. So we have base flesh, natural flesh, fairy flesh, and white flesh. And these are from the Natura range as well. Again, another really fantastic set of paints. If you don't have them, Model Color do some fantastic alternatives as well. Just look for similar flesh tones or use whatever flesh tones you have in your ranges that you think would suit the shades you've got. Obviously starting with the darker tone here, I'm with a very, very thin paint. I'm just slowly building up and reinforcing the color. I'm mostly focusing around the cheekbones, the nose, and just above the eyes. The base layer we did with dwarf skin, and the gloomy violet and the deep purple express color paints is really, really nice. You can almost leave it but because this miniature is a little bit more special. He's still not full display. I'm not spending an hours and hours on him here, but I want to make him look a little bit nicer. So I'm just spending a bit more time reinforcing those areas and slowly blending in these colors. So just work my way up in the color range, slightly increasing the highlights on the tops of the cheekbones and around the eyes. Again, the same method followed on the artist, not forgetting that we have his hands to do as well. Now we really are into the final stages now. So just using some white glue to glue in the art that Warlord Games very, very handily supply with you. Can you imagine having to try and paint something on the easel? I think we'd start with a stick man for a bit of a joke if this wasn't included in the set. I really didn't want to freehand fleur de lis on the bottoms of the stones here. So I was going to leave it. And then I remember that I had some old Bretonian from Warhammer um, transfer sheets and there were some yellow fleur 
fleur-de-lis there this one broke as i put it on but they're nearly always fixable just with a little bit of mucking around with the blade and we got it sorted using micro set and micro sole just to make sure those decals blend in really really nicely and that's a really pleasing effect without having to do any freehand actually brushed in a little bit of light green pigment here into the carpet i blew most of it off but i wanted it to look like a slightly dusty well-worn carpet and there we are all finished I had loads of fun doing this and it, it wasn't something i was expecting i was contacted by kieran at warlord games and said would you paint one for me do a little video on it i jumped at the chance because i thought it was such a fun miniature but it wasn't something i was going to get around to ordering i just thought it's one of those i looked at and thought if i had the time but i made the time and i'm glad i did now i'd have loved to spend proper time making it into a proper display piece and when i mean that i mean more than the six hours that i spent painting this i'd like to spend a proper amount of time on it and really work on challenging myself with some of the free hand rather than what i did here but funnily enough i am quite happy with it for the amount of time i was able to spend on it it's something that will sit in the cabinet and look pretty next to a few other individual models like this that don't really fit in any armies but uh, definitely had fun doing and i'm very thankful for warlord for sending me a copy this was obviously a slightly unusual tutorial compared to some of the others is not one that i expect many people to follow it's not something that people are going to be putting in their armies but if you have picked up this miniature uh, maybe it'll give you a few ideas about how you could go about painting it yourselves and have a look at that uh, competition lovely to see what other people do with their miniature as i say i've got no intention of, of entering this this was painted because warlord sent it but i'm really looking forward to seeing that people's entries because no doubt they will be on the warlord games website and if you do enter good luck hopefully you will win the big box of goodies that they have set out for the winner so let me know what you think of the miniature and um, let me know if you're going to be entering the painting competition. It'd be interesting to hear if other people have plans and let me know if you're going to go and see the movie. Something I'm really, really excited to see. I'm a little bit worried that I won't get to it in time. It's quite hard when the wife's not going to go and watch Napoleon with me and I'm pretty sure my nine-year-old and my four-year-old won't be going to watch it with me. So I'm hoping that I don't have to wait till it comes out um, in a couple of months' time on Apple. But if I do, I do. But I will definitely try and see the film if I can. But anyway, time to let you go. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.